Ask Reddit Thread. What sentence has killed the most people? No, I'm good. I can drive. I'm just hidden here, wondering if drunk horse riding was ever a problem before cars were around. Edit, thank you for all these interesting stories and bits of history. Well, I'm sure giving a horse alcohol has always been frowned upon. <laughs> Assuming the horse hasn't been drinking, it can get... It can handle getting home itself. If it's on route, it frequently travels. Uh, well, that's sobering. Can you tell the time? Uh, what are you going to do? Shoot me? A quote from Man Stabbed. What are you going to do? Stab me? Yeah, never taunt someone who has a gun pointed at you. Followed up with, you don't have the balls. <laughs> that didn't hurt. Well, it doesn't have to hurt to kill you. It's a girl. Only in China and India and Saudi Arabia and Pakistan, ancient Greece, Canada. Why Canada? Less likely to survive moose attacks. Uh, this is probably true historically speaking. Fuck this threat is depressing. Yeah, fuck this shit. Well, you see, the thing is, in India, they have this thing where they'll go to an ultrasound, and if they find out it's a girl, they'll just get an abortion and try again for a guy. It's actually like a huge, huge problem. Although, now that I say that, I don't know if it's actually in India. I think it is. I'm very sure it is, but I'm not 100% because I read this a long time ago. And... Uh, gender selection abortions are like actually a, a big thing totally forgot about that that is so true for this thread it's for the greater good the greater good the greater good <laughs> uh, crusty jugglers I forget the name of that movie they're referencing right there it's your wife no I'm your wife the greatest good you'll ever have <laughs> where is my super suit forget the list he goes to the block what? What, an oblivion is that? Dragon, roar. This is the most emotionally distant Audelon I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, it's from Skyrim. Finish him. I'm sorry, Adolf, but we will not be offering you a place in our art college, Mr. Hitler. Strange to think that the time of the remark Hitler wasn't a word synonymous with mass killings. Mr. Hitler then would have just been seen another Joan in the crowd. No sentence before he had made a man so furious. You are so right. Shh. These jokes are putting me out of mine comfort zone. And frankly, I don't like them. This is Nazi way I thought this would go. You didn't see this coming. <laughs> you guys need to polish up your pun. <laughs> There's always a pun thread like this after someone makes something about Hitler, a Hitler joke. Sully takes off glass. Uh, hey, follow Mongolians. Want to ride your horses around? Goddamn Mongolians. They tear down my shitty wall. The Allied and Associated Governments affirm and Germany accepts responsibility of Germany and her allies for causing all the loss and damage to which the Allied and Associated Governments and their nations have been subjugated as a consequence of the war opposed upon them by the aggression of Germany and her allies. Article 231 of the Versailles Treaty. Oh, the treatment of Germany after World War I, which later caused World War II. This is probably the right answer. The crushing reparations imposed on Germany after World War I set the scene for the rise of the Nazis. And, well, we all know the rest. This is actually a hotly debated issue in terms of histography of the period, with no correct answer, but you rarely see the other side, so I thought I'd provide it in case someone was curious. The essentially Keynesian argument that you are championing is based on the fact that the reparations... reparations are what caused the hyperinflation that allowed the Nazis to rise to power. It's actually possible to argue the intermean Weimar government took deliberately inflating inflationary policies for a range of reasons. To try and reduce the value of the war debt through devaluing currency, to try to encourage the reduction of reparations and an attempt to maintain employment above all else. Germany's unemployment and trade unions in 1922 was 4.5% to Britain's 17%. That didn't seem so bad. And this led to massive economic crises that occurred in the interwar years. Wait, unemployment to trade unions? Are you sure it's not the other way around? Because 4.5% unemployment's not half bad. 
furthermore, it can be argued that the reparations themselves are not necessarily as high upon first observation. They were split up to A, B, and C bonds. The theory being that you had to pay off the A bonds before you moved on to paying the B bonds and so on. The vast majority of the reparations were C bonds. And the argument goes that because of stipulations on paying the other types back first, there was never an expectation that Germany would have to pay all the debts back. A way to keep Clemenceau, the French prince minister, happy, as he and his country wanted to punish the Germans for damage they had done during the war, whilst at the same time accommodating the more modern Wilson and arguably Lloyd, Lloyd George as well. It's hard to explain the necessary details for this argument to make sense in just a Reddit post. I'm at work. But a good piece to read that makes the argument, let's see, blah, blah, blah. Hyperinflation did not lead to the rise of Nazis. This is a common misconception. Hyperinflation was over in 1924. Nazis won 3% of their vote that year, and only 2.6% in 1928. It was mass unemployment associated with the Great Depression that rocketed the Nazis to power. Execute Order 66. That's a, that's a Star Wars thing, not, not a real thing. Is the guy with the massive head who tried to defend himself? Uh, let's see not the younglings fire air earth water long ago the four nations lived in harmony but everything changed when the fire nation attacked only the avatar master of all four elements could stop them but when the world needed him most he vanished a hundred years passed and my brother and i discovered the new avatar and his name is john cena that's what those trumpets are the death sentence. Hmm, not always. Take this story for example. A man lives in a foreign country and his job is to operate the train that connects one town to another. He is not very good at his job and he is also very greedy. Since his income does not meet his expenses, he decides to steal from his passengers' fares. At first, he only steals a little. However, as he gets more and more greedy, he steals more and more. Eventually, he is caught. The company is furious. Once he has been tried and found guilty, the company asks for the death penalty. The court refuses, choosing to banish him from the country instead. The man moves on to another country, certain that he can dedicate himself to a new life. However, the only thing he really understands is operating trains. So before long, he is a train operator in this new country. Unfortunately, the old habit comes back, and after a while, he starts stealing from passengers' fares again. Once again, he is eventually caught and taken back to trial. Once he is found guilty, the judge says he has no hope for reform, since it is the second time this man has been caught doing this. Thus, the judge sends the man to death. On the day of execution, the man is placed in the electric chair and the chair is turned on. Much to the surprise of everyone there, the man is not even hurt. He just sits there as if nothing is happening. The instrument panel says the electric chair is working, but the man is completely unaffected. The chair is turned off and on several more times, but the man doesn't even flinch. Finally, one of the guards asks the man why the electric chair isn't hurting him. And the man replies, well, I've always been a really poor conductor. <laughs> Uh, buzz kill here. The reason people die when they're in the chair, struck by lightning or otherwise electrocuted, is because our flesh bags are poor conductors of electricity. The energy just kind of rattles around and doesn't have any convenient way of getting out. So we just get fucked up. Same reason your lightning rod is still intact, but a tree that gets struck by lightning doesn't fare so well. Good conductors can pass the current energy into the ground, no problem. I realize this is a joke based on a shitty pun, but hey, the more you know. <laughs> Fuck you. That ending shocked me. I heard hurts from all these puns. No, my head hurts from all these puns. This is a bit off track. This product is inflammable. What a country. Uh, this way to the showers in German. Good point. Her get es zun den Duschen. I'm pretty sure I pronounced all that wrong. Considering I'm pretty sure there's a different way to pronounce English words in German. I mean English letters. Uh, I'm pretty sure they weren't to the cordial. It was probably more like get in the fucking showers. What's the worst that could happen? Yes, I would like to unsize my meal. I will die the slow death of heart disease. Heart disease and cancer. Actually, no, heart disease is the number one killer of people in first world countries. Cancer is like second, or I don't know. It's in the top five. Uh, suicide's in the top ten, too. A long... Actually, I think suicide's actually higher than homicide kills for first world countries. But that has nothing to do with, with this. A long, 
can't walk, Xbox, T spawn, C T spawn, B B B, A short, A A A, hold shift. I don't get it. Hey long catwalk. Don't forget that after a live report of those calls you get shouted at. Don't you have any sound? God you noob. Okay. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, bring out the comfy chair. Wouldn't that actually be the funniest joke? They execute only a few thousand people, which is still a lot, but not as much as people think. Oh my god, they killed millions of people, Monty Python did, with laughter. Wahahaha. <laughs> Except for the three month notice they gave before coming to town. Technically, everybody expected the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, I feel really dumb asking this, but I've honestly never learned. What happened during the Spanish Inquisition? I should probably read that someday. I actually don't know either. Hold my beer. I don't think this kills people. It just leads to the stupidest, best ideas ever. Let's have one more beer. Work will set you free. <laughs> it doesn't say not to. Pull out. You can't kill. It never existed. That's not murder. Just a time paradox. What the fuck, Aldolf? This painting sucks ass. <laughs> Work shall set you free. Still killing people today. Avada uh, Kedavra. Expelliarmus. Wingardiva Levios. Wait, Wingardium Leviosa. Leviosa. No, Ron, stop! Avada Kedavra is the death spell from Harry Potter. I don't remember what it, these other ones are, though. I know the Harry Potter references, though. I do. The shortest sentence in the English language is, I am. The longest sentence is, I do. <laughs> hey, y'all, watch this. Any last words? Yes, just three. <laughs> Give me the guns. When is das nunstruck get un slot mehr ja? Oh, I, I don't know how to say all that. I'm pretty sure it's some German. Walton Dent Total Craig. Don't worry, it's not loaded. I'm Jewish. Win S. Oh, more German. My name is Noga Montoya. Your father killed my father. Prepare to die. Inigo Montoya. I've watched Princess Bride. How do I can I not say his name correctly? Peace for our time. Uh, the phrase peace for a time was spoken on the 30th of September 1938 by British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain in his speech concerning the Munich Agreement of the Anglo-German Declaration. The phrase echoed, wait, in 1938, peace in our time. I have returned from Germany with peace for our time. It is primarily remembered for its iconic value. Less than a year after the agreement, Hitler's continued aggression and his invasion of Poland was followed by declaration of war in Germany by France and the United Kingdom. Mmm, that is ironic. Alright. Well, that's, that's it for this thread. It was a little bit shorter than I thought it would be. These, these Ask Reddit threads. I originally started them so I could get someone to copy the idea. And for at the same time, that way I could practice reading off the cuff other people's stuff so I could be better at reading my scripts because I usually mess them up a lot. After doing so many of these videos, I don't know how many I've done so far, about 50. I'll have to check on the channel when I upload this video. I've gotten a lot better. Like, whenever I read scripts now for my other videos, I can usually go like halfway through before I mess up a line, which is ridiculous. I used to mess up a line like every other couple sentences. So, this 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 channel has really helped me out with my with my reading. You probably would also notice I've gotten a lot better at reading these as it goes on because I messed up a lot in the earlier ones because it's not like people spell everything correctly on Reddit. Sometimes they'll spell things wrong or incorrect, but most of the time they don't, so I'm not really good at just reading out loud, I should say, thanks to reading these Ask Reddit threads on this channel. <laughs>